Good morning, guys. I'm in Salento, Colombia, and I haven't had coffee yet this morning, but that doesn't matter because I am on my way to see a coffee plantation. A coffee shop full of people doing what we want and sometimes what we need to. And here she is on a daily default. Customer serving with a smile like a free show. If you follow me on Instagram, do you remember my Instagram story about Lulu? Yes, the dog. <laughs> she followed us around for hours and hours and hours. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> she completely stole my heart. She even brought us to a cafe where we sampled our very first real Colombian coffee. Then she followed us back to our hostel. She sat under our bed and it kind of felt like she wanted us to adopt her. Hi, baby. <laughs> <laughs> It was Lulu who introduced us to a man named Timothy Edwards, who is Don Eduardo, and it's his coffee plantation that we're on our way to tour today to see how Arabica coffee is produced in Colombia. Make yourself a bay full of true ray. Make a cup of coffee and ask them all to stay. Try this. Okay, thank you. All these deadly Ready. <laughs> Make a cup of coffee and ask them all to stay. Here we go. <laughs> I missed her so much. It's only been two days. I just uh, lost the high point somewhere. All oh, right, so there you target. go. Okay. That's your target, yeah? I'm, I don't want to get you. Oh, that's okay. You're not going to worry about it. Don't worry about that. Okay. Okay, you okay? Yeah. Now here. Then here, then here, here, here. Oh. One, two, three. <laughs> nice. Okay, I might need a new from land dog. Man. Coffee grows on white oak trees. River flows with brandy. Oh. Mm. Sí. Puedo? Sí, claro. Oh. Sí. 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 Oh, it's so strong. That takes skill to pour with no spell. Gracias. Salud. <laughs> it's so fresh. It's too good for words. This is the freshest cup of coffee I have ever had. It's unreal. It's so oily. You wouldn't want to add anything to this coffee. It's so full of flavor. And I can't believe that I'm standing in the place where it grew and that I just saw it roasted. It's, I can't even believe it. It's so cool. <laughs> It's an incredible place. Most coffee farms are about two to three hectares. Here, they have five to seven, depending on how you measure. Apparently there are 300,000 coffee farms, and they're small because when it comes to coffee farming, there's no economy of scale, so it doesn't pay to be larger because all of the coffee beans have to be hand-picked off of the plants. They don't only grow coffee here, they also have a ton of fruit trees, guava, yucca, tea, bananas, plantains, all sorts of delicious things that I just want to run around the trees picking stuff up and eating them as I go. There are two types of coffee you can grow, modern and traditional, and there are variations in how they taste, how much caffeine they have, and the way that you farm them. This plant is modern, and you can see this beautiful white flower. Once the flower drops off, it's replaced by what's called the coffee cherry. I love that name. And the coffee bean is inside the coffee cherry, and the coffee cherry is often red or yellow, and once you open it, there's a little white bean inside that has a coating. 
and that is what you need to take off because it's full of sugar. So they soak it in water to get all of the sugar out because if you roast beans with the sugar, it actually has the reverse effect that you would think. It actually makes the coffee taste more bitter. So you don't want to have that little coating on it. So they take the coating off, then they dry them out in the sun is the best possible way. And then they're ready to be sold before they're roasted. One of the things that takes a little more time and care when you're farming traditional coffee is that it likes shade a lot. So you have to plant them with a row of banana trees in between so that they cast shade on those plants and bananas and plantains are perfect because they grow nice and tall and they grow fast. One of the things that makes coffee farming especially challenging is that once the coffee beans have grown in a particular spot on the plant, they never grow there again. They grow towards the end, so you can see there's new growth here, or they grow up, but never twice in the same spot. These farms are built into the Andes Mountains. This is not an easy place to walk around, let alone to do a harvest. During the rainy season is when they harvest most of the coffee beans and they wear buckets where they put all of the coffee beans. They're dressed head to toe in rain gear in the pouring rain. So the next time you're drinking a cup of coffee, think of the person standing in the rain picking those beans for you to enjoy. <laughs> Like any plant, coffee beans need certain conditions to grow, but the Robusta coffee is a lot less needy than the Arabica, which is what's grown here in Colombia. We're in the high mountain range of Colombia right now because coffee has to be grown at a certain altitude, and it also has to be grown in a climate with zero frost, so that means Canada is out. I found out that the biggest producer of coffee in the whole world is Brazil, followed by Vietnam, which kind of surprised me, and the spots for third and fourth fluctuate between Colombia and Indonesia. Mexico also produces a lot of quality coffee, as well as Ethiopia, of course, and India. I found out the countries that consume the most coffee as well. Any guesses? <laughs> Maybe you're thinking it's your country? <laughs> so the top are Finland, number one, Norway, and Iceland, which does not surprise me at all. My mum's side of the family is Icelandic and Boy, do we drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> I feel like kids start having coffee in Iceland when they're like two or three and can hold a coffee cup. So that didn't surprise me. You can just imagine when it's cold and it's dark outside, there's nothing like nestling up with a, a hot cup of coffee. Something I find kind of funny is that even though Colombia is one of the biggest producers and exporters of coffee in the whole world, they're actually number 55 when it comes to consumption of coffee. And if you're wondering where Canada is on the list, it's number nine. This is a bamboo forest. Bamboo grows incredibly fast, about this much a day. It's one of the only plants where you can actually see its growth every day if you return to it. It gets really, really tall and it's a really important building material in this part of the world. I also didn't realize something Don Eduardo explained to us, which is that they get really full of water. And the water that's stored inside the bamboo corresponds to the moon cycle, just like the tide. So when they want to harvest this bamboo and cut it down, they wait until low tide, which is around three in the morning here, before they come out and chop it down in the dark so that it has the least amount of water in it as possible. So cute. I grew up in the country and I could not feel more at home here than wearing rubber boots, walking around this farm. I just love it here. I've learned so much about farming in Colombia today. It was incredible to see coffee growing in the ground and learn about the whole production process of how it makes it from the ground to your coffee cup. I hope that you enjoyed learning about it too and hopefully it'll give you something to think about the next time you're sipping a cup of coffee. This particular tour is the Don Eduardo tour. If you find yourself in Salento, I cannot recommend it enough. I will link the information down below. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more travel videos and I'll see you in my next one.